Using the provided USB cable, connect one end to the back of your Vocaster and the other end to your computer. Next, turn your Vocaster on using the power button on the back panel. To ensure a connection has been made between your Vocaster and your computer, check that the computer icon is lit white. After connecting your Vocaster to your computer, your computer should set it as your default audio device. If not, go to System Preferences, Sound, and ensure that you have selected Vocaster 2 USB as your output and input devices. You can connect two sets of headphones to your Vocaster 2, one for yourself, the host, and one for a guest. Both headphone outputs will give you a default mix. This default mix includes anything connected to your Vocaster 2, such as computer audio, the two microphones, the phone input, and Bluetooth audio. This mix can be controlled from Vocaster Hub's mixer panel. Connect your headphones to the host socket on the front panel of your Vocaster 2. If you have a guest, connect your headphones to the guest socket on the front panel of your Vocaster 2. You can adjust the volumes for each pair of headphones separately with the monitor level controls on the Vocaster 2 here. You can also mute the speaker outputs from the Vocaster hub as well. To connect active speakers to your Vocaster 2, you need either quarter inch jack to jack cables or quarter inch jack to XLR cables. We recommend using balanced TRS quarter inch jack cables for the best results. Ensure your speakers are connected to power, but don't switch them on just yet, as this can cause damage to your speakers when connecting cables. Making sure that the host dial on your Vocaster is turned down. Connect one end of your audio cable to the left socket on the back panel of your Vocaster and the other end to your left speaker. Then connect one end of your other audio cable to the right socket on the back panel of your Vocaster and the other end to your right speaker. You can now turn your speakers on. Once they're on, Turn up the host dial on your Vocaster and test the audio from any source within your machine, such as YouTube or Spotify. For this connection, you'll need a microphone and an XLR cable. You can connect up to two microphones on the back panel of your Vocaster 2, one for yourself, the host, and one for a guest. To avoid damaging your microphone, Ensure that the gain of the host's microphone on your Vocaster is all the way down. You can do this by selecting the host button and adjusting the microphone dial anti-clockwise until the gain halo light is no longer visible. Connect one end of the XLR cable to the back panel of your Vocaster and the other end to a microphone. If you're using a condenser microphone, then you need to turn on phantom power. Phantom power is used to activate a condenser microphone. You can control phantom power separately for each channel, simply by selecting the channel and then applying phantom power. Your microphone is now ready to use. Auto gain sets your levels with the click of a button with more than enough gain on tap for most popular broadcast mics. In this part of the video, I'm going to be showing you how you can use Vocaster's auto gain feature to set the levels of your microphones. Simply activate it by a long press on the host or guest buttons here. Then speak into the microphone at a good distance like this with the voice you're going to use to record. Auto gain is activated by a long press on the host button. 
or by pressing the auto gain icon within the Vocaster app. Simply speak into the microphone using the speaking voice that you'll use for the recording itself for 10 seconds. Just as long as it takes for the gain halo and the software countdowns to finish. An auto gain will set the input level for the input and you're ready to start recording using that microphone. If the auto gain process fails, the halo flashes red. Just make sure your microphone is connected correctly and try again. After using auto gain, you can still manually adjust the levels with the gain knob at any time. Simply short press the host button first and adjust the dial. Again, to avoid damaging your microphone, ensure that the gain of the guest's microphone on your vocaster is all the way down until the gain halo light is no longer visible. For this connection, you'll need a second microphone and another XLR cable. Connect one end of the XLR cable to the back panel of your vocaster and the other end to your microphone. If you're using a condenser microphone, you can control phantom power separately for each channel, simply by selecting the channel and then applying phantom power. And the phantom power LED will light up. When you have two microphones connected to your Vocaster 2, you can easily determine which channel has phantom power applied. For example, when applying phantom power to the host channel, you'll see that the phantom power LED is lit red. But when you switch over to your guest channel, you'll see that the LED is now a lighter red. This means that phantom power is applied to the host channel, but not the guest. This also applies the other way around. To apply auto gain to the guest microphone, simply repeat the steps we use to apply auto gain to the host microphone. Long press the guest button or select the auto gain icon within the Vocaster app, speak into the microphone for 10 seconds, as long as it takes for the gain halo and the software countdowns to finish, an auto gain will set the input level for the input and you're ready to start recording using that microphone. And again, you can still manually adjust the levels with the gain knob at any time. Simply short press the guest button and adjust the dial. You're one cable away from adding Vocaster Studio Sound to your camera. No need to sync up in post, just plug in and hit the red button. The 3.5mm camera TRS jack socket on the rear panel allows you to connect most DSLR or video cameras. Recording the output of the Vocaster gives a higher quality recording than a camera's internal microphone, without the need for you to synchronise the audio and video later on. For this connection, you'll need a 3.5mm TRS cable, one that's long enough to reach between your Vocaster and your camera. If your camera input uses a different connector, use a suitable adapter cable. Simply connect one end of the 3.5mm TRS cable to your Vocaster and the other end to the audio or mic input of your camera. Ensure your audio's camera source is set to use this input rather than its internal microphone. Please use your camera manufacturer's guidelines on how to change the audio input of your video camera. The camera output carries the same mix as the USB output's show mix on your Vocaster. This means that the levels can be set by the faders in the Vocaster hub mixer, letting you connect a camera and computer to your Vocaster at the same time. You can listen to this mix using the headphones or speaker outputs on your Vocaster. You can connect a Vocaster to a phone to record anything from a phone conversation to music. For this, you need a TRRS jack-to-jack -jack cable to connect to the headphone socket on the phone, which will normally also be a 3.5mm TRRS socket. If the phone does not have a 3.5mm headphone port, you can use a 3.5mm TRRS headphone adapter. The phone connection is two-way, so your phone guest will hear the show mix from Vocaster Hub, including both microphones 
computer sounds and Bluetooth. Your phone guest won't hear their own voice. The 3.5mm phone TRRS jack socket on the rear panel allows for connection with most phones for capturing broadcast quality recordings. Connect one end of the 3.5mm TRRS cable to your phone and the other end to the Vocaster. Vocaster 2 is Bluetooth enabled, letting you connect Vocaster 2 to another Bluetooth enabled device, like a phone, allowing you to stream audio from that device or record a voice call wirelessly. To transfer audio between a Vocaster 2 and another Bluetooth enabled device, like a phone, the two devices must be paired. To enable pairing, press and hold the Bluetooth insert on the back panel and the Bluetooth LED will start to flash, meaning that it's searchable. Now grab your phone, enable your Bluetooth, select Vocaster BT on your phone's Bluetooth device list, and when paired successfully, the Bluetooth LED will light up blue. You can adjust the level of Bluetooth audio in your show mix by using the phone's volume control or the Bluetooth fader in Vocaster Hub. To disconnect your device from your Vocaster 2, simply select the Bluetooth button insert on the back panel and the Bluetooth LED will switch off. <laughs>